Item number SCP-049 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-049 is to be contained in a secure holding cell in Research Sector. SCP-049 is not to be removed from its cell unless approved by a Level 2 or higher personnel, before which SCP-049 must be heavily sedated. Even so, at such times, SCP-049 is to be accompanied by two armed guards and guided by an iron collar, secured to two iron poles two meters in length, and held firmly by two Level 1 or higher personnel while in transit. Any experiments performed on SCP-049 are to be conducted inside of specifically prepared rooms. See Document 042-D-3-18. SCP-049 cells should be monitored at all times via a security camera. Should any abnormal behavior occur, Dr. is to be alerted at once. Description. SCP-049 is humanoid in appearance, standing at 1.9 meters tall and weighing 95.3 kilograms. However, the Foundation is currently incapable of studying its face and body more fully, as it is covered in what appears to be the garb of a traditional plague doctor from the 15th to 16th century Europe. This material is actually a part of SCP-049's body, as microscopic and genetic testing show it to be similar in structure to muscle, although it feels much like rough leather, and the mask much like ceramic. It was originally discovered in England by local police. Mobile Task Force responded to a suspected outbreak of all civilians within a 0.5 km radius were given Class A amnestics as part of the initial containment procedure. SCP-049 does not speak. See Addendum A-1. Although it seems to understand English perfectly well, and is completely docile until it tries to perform surgery. SCP-049's touch is invariably lethal to humans. After contact with SCP-049's hands, the victim, hereafter referred to as SCP-049-2, suffers and dies within moments. SCP-049 will then attempt to kill all humans it can see in a similar manner, supposedly to avoid interruption, before returning to SCP-049-2. It produces a bag made of containing scalpels, needle, thread, and several vials of an as-of-yet unidentified substance from somewhere within its body. Research has been unable to locate these tools when inside of SCP-049 through X-ray and similar techniques, and begins dissecting SCP-049-2, as well as inserting various chemicals into the body. After approximately 20 minutes, SCP-049 will sew SCP-049-2 back up and become docile once more. After a period of a few minutes, SCP-049-2 will resume vital signs and appears to reanimate. However, SCP-049-2 seems completely without higher brain functions and will wander aimlessly until it encounters another living human. At that point, SCP-049-2's adrenaline and endorphin levels increase to approximately 300% as it attempts to kill and any human beings it can find before returning to its mindless state and wandering until it comes across more humans. At this stage, termination with extreme prejudice is allowed. Failure to enforce this protocol outside of testing scenarios see Addendum T-049-12, is punishable by termination. Detailed autopsies of SCP-049-2 have found several unusual substances, along with usual substances in large amounts, within the bodies, including However, several have yet to be identified. Researchers with Level 3 or higher authorization refer to Addendum C-1. Addendum A-1 SCP-049 spoke for the first time today, December 6, 2000, addressing Dr. A full account of the conversation is attached. Interviewed, SCP-049 Interviewer, Dr. Forward SCP-049 randomly begins speaking with no obvious provocation en route to a testing facility. Dr. was recording notes at the time on a handheld microphone. Irrelevant data has been omitted. What is this place? What? It's a lab- There is a loud crash here from Dr. Dropping the recording device in shock. A laboratory? 
It is quite marvelous. I now find it no wonder I've seen so few victims of the disease in here. Yeah, you see, I thought you incapable of speech. I'm somewhat startled you, um, can. Oh my, yes, good sir. I simply prefer not to. Most victims of the disease are quite melancholy and do not react at all well to conversation. I have seen you several times now, and I have not detected the disease in you. Therefore, I assume you are also a doctor? Uh, yes, actually, call me… But what disease are you talking about? Why, good doctor, the Great Pestilence, what else? Great Pest- Oh, the plague! Should have seen that coming, but no one here is infected, I can assure you. Oh, good doctor, I can assure you, the pestilence is here, and I can sense it. It is my duty in life to rid the world of it. My cure is most effective. Your cure? Your cure has cost us hundreds of lives. Your cure is faulty. Good doctor, my cure is most effective. SCP-049 lapsed once again to silence, and no further attempts to make it speak were effective. Closing Statement We managed to get our test done for that day, trying to figure out what causes it to perform surgery, or more accurately, what it detects as the pestilence. So far, research has shown us no correlation between any of the D-Class personnel it has performed surgery on. We're still working on it. Doctor. Addendum C-1 Level 3 Authorization Required On April 26, 2000, SCP-049 managed to break containment. During the roughly five-minute period in which it was unsupervised, it came into contact with SCP. Upon being detained, SCP-049 was very calm and amiable. Since this time, however, SCP had been shown to be much more talkative leading up to and performing surgery. I don't know what 049 that damn mass talked about, but he seems much happier overall. He no longer seems to simply sit and mope around in his cell, and several staff have claimed to hear him humming old church hymns. In addition, in the moments leading up to performing surgery, he has started talking, apparently trying to comfort his victim, claiming that he is the cure, among other things. The focus of our research has been shifted toward finding out what the hell he and talked about during their little chat. Doctor.